It is understatement for me to say that I am proud of you, God's men. Your record of loyalty, your record of discipline, the task of keeping this country one and united. Hit, hit it! I'm here to highlight the political climate of Nigeria under the military rule. Between 1966 and 1999, 33 years, the country was mainly under the domination of military rule. But in 1979, Major General Olusegun Obasanjo tried to restore democracy in the country and Adishehu Shagari was elected as the second democratic president of Nigeria. However, the civilian government didn't last long after a military coup led by Major General Muhammadu Buhari brought the country back to a military rule in 1983. Major General John C. Abu Ironsi captured power and became the first military head of state of Nigeria after the first military coup that was organized by few majors in the Nigerian army in January 15, 1966. Abu Ironsi was the senior Nigerian officer in the military at that time. The coup deposed the civilian government and led to the killings of the highest ranked politicians in the northern and western regions of the country. Tafawa Baliwa, who was the first prime minister of Nigeria, was also killed. Functions federal military government will be exercised by the Supreme Military Council and leaders of which will be announced later. Permanent secretaries in charge of federal ministries will continue in their office, carrying out the normal functions of government, and they shall be directly responsible to federal military government when constituted. Apparently, every military head of state at that time came out with a justification of why they overthrew the previous government. The first military coup that brought Abu Ironsi into power was justified on the corruption that was existing among civilian politicians. During the press conference, one of the journalists asked if whether or not his administration is going to be a permanent or a caretaker administration. Just listen to his reply. General, whether he regards his administration as a permanent or a caretaker administration. My main concern is to restore law and order as soon as possible. However, Abu Iran's leadership did not last long. He was only in power for a few months before being murdered in a bloody counter coup led by the Northerners in July 1966. General Yakubu Gowan seized power after the counter coup against Abu Ironsi. Few months after Gowan came into power, the country was engulfed with political and tribal tensions, which led to the killings of thousands of Igbos in the northern part of the country. I therefore put before you the following forms of government for consideration a federal system with a strong central government. Federal system with a weak central government, confederation, or an entirely new arrangement which will be peculiar to Nigeria and which has not yet found its way into any political dictionary. The tribal tensions and political conflicts after the first coup is what later led to the Nigerian Civil War. Prior to the war, thousands of Igbos were being persecuted and marginalized in the northern part of the country. In 1967, after tensions have reached a boiling point, the Nigerian Civil War broke out as the Easterners formed the Republic of Biafra and declared secession from Nigeria. Over 100,000 soldiers and 1 million civilians were killed in the Civil War, also known as Biafran War. Gowan's aim for the Civil War was to keep Nigeria one. During the war, the sign that says to keep Nigeria one is a task was posted all over the country. We've got men able to do the task. The task of keeping this country one and united. The task 
of making everyone in this country and every African proud of being a Nigerian or an African. Hit, hit, hit. According to history, the insistent killings of the Igbos in the country at that time and the control over oil production in Biafra land led to the Civil War. During the war, Gowan came out with a slogan that says, to keep Nigeria one is a task. In 1970, some Biafra secessionists decided to surrender after Oduku, who was the mastermind of the civil war, fled the country. I, Major General Philip Ephium, officer administering the government of the Republic of Biafra, now wish to make the following declaration. That we affirm we are loyal Nigerian citizens and accept the authority of the Federal Military Government of Nigeria, that the Republic of Biafra hereby ceases to exist. In 1975, the third coup was organized against General Gowan's government. General Moitala Mohamed grabbed power and became the third military head of state of Nigeria. Gowan was not in the country when the third coup was carried out. He was attending a meeting of leaders of the 46 member countries of the Organization of African Unity in Kampala, Uganda. General Yakubu Gowan was attending a meeting in Kampala, Uganda when the third coup was carried out. He was actually in the middle of the meeting when he was told that his government has been overthrown. I this very much and with regard to the black peoples all over the world, I think as to be... Comment from you, sir. We heard that there had been a nervous strain. Have you heard this? I've seen your, your, the various uh, in the Reuters, uh, Reuters report. Yes. Look, I've got no comments to make yes. at this stage, okay? We are going to continue attending this meeting. From all indication, a new government has been established in Nigeria. I wish to state that I, on my part, have also accepted the change and pledge my full loyalty to my nation, to my country, and the new government. General Moitala's administration led to the removal of some high-ranking politicians and officials from power, and many were tried for corruption charges. This was an effort to differentiate his government from that of Yakubu Gowansa regime. During his short time in office, the Nigerian government took over all broadcasting and media platforms. Events of the past few years have indicated that despite our great human and material resources, the government has not been able to fulfill the legitimate expectations of our people. Nigeria has been left to drift. On February 13, 1976, Montala Mohamed was assassinated in his black Mercedes-Benz car en route to his office at Danda Barracks in Lagos. He was only 37 years old. The coup was led by Lieutenant Colonel Uka Sunka Dinka. Major General Olusegun Obasejo, who was the chief of staff under the regime of Muntala Mohamed, became the military head of state of Nigeria. The death of Muntala Mohamed threw the whole country into confusion and fear about the brutality of military rule in Nigeria. General Olusegun Obasejo, who was the chief of staff under the regime of Muntala Mohamed, became the military head of state in 1976. The military government is convinced that we must produce what we need. We must curtail our appetite for what we do not produce. To ensure this, we have directed all efforts at laying the basis for the emergence of indigenous capital and innovative ability. General Obasanjo did not participate in the 1975 military coup, although he supported the coup and General Moritala. 
Ambassador was subsequently made the deputy under the regime of Muhtala Muhammad and was also a subject of assassination but managed to escape. Ambassador's administration re-established security and military rule in the country. During his time in office, a program to restore civilian rule in Nigeria was established and Ambassador continued this program, holding general elections in 1979 and helping to create the Nigerian constitution. On the 1st of October 1979, history was made in Africa when Obasanjo peacefully handed power over to a civilian government of Alaji Shehu Shagari. I, Sheikh Usman Ali Shagari, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will be faithful, that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I will discharge my duties. I will discharge my duties to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. General Obasanjo made history in Africa when he peacefully handed over power to a civilian government in 1979. Today in Nigeria, he is referred to as the godfather of democracy due to the role he played in restoring democracy in the country during his regime as a military head of state. President Shehu Shagari became the second democratic elected president of Nigeria. Prior to the election, he was appointed Minister of Economic Affairs in 1970 and later as the Minister of Finance by General Gowansi military government. It was an attempt to include civilians in the leadership positions of Nigeria. While running for president in 1979, the National Party of Nigeria's slogan was One Nation, One Destiny which reflects Nigerian ethnic diversity as well as the common goal for success in the country. After the booming oil prices reduced in 1981, economic crisis engulfed the country. The downturn of the Nigerian economy and the several allegations of corruption led to Shagari being overthrown in a military coup led by Major General Muhammadu Buhari in 1983. The 1983 coup led by General Muhammadu Buhari deposed power from the civilian government of President Shehu Shagari. General Buhari justified the coup on the corruption and economic crisis in the country during the civilian government. Fraud, indiscipline, corruption, squandermania, misuse and abuse of public office for self or group aggrandizement, which had assumed debilitating proportions in the last few years will be dealt with ruthlessly no matter whoever may be involved. The private sector has also its share of crimes against the Nigerian economy, especially in the area of the distribution of basic commodities. Reports reaching us confirm large-scale holding of commodities. I have already warned that holding will not be tolerated. General Muhammadu Buhari successfully overthrown the democratic elected government of Shagari. He justified the army's actions in 1983 by defining the civilian government as having been corrupt and hopeless. Brigadier Tude Idiagmo was appointed as the chief of staff. Buhari quickly reformed the constitution that was created in 1979 by the civilian government. The poor situation of Nigerian economy at that time prompted Buhari to implement policies that would encourage economic stability. These policies included the raising of interest rates, major cuts to public and government spending, and prohibiting the government from borrowing more money. Buhari also caught Nigeria's tie with the International Monetary Fund during this period. But his regime was a combination of both good and bad. Some of his policies gave powers to the military to jail, execute, and detain individuals suspected of jeopardizing state security or causing economic adversity in the country. A very harsh measure of war against indiscipline was implemented by his regime. Today, Diagmon, who was appointed as the chief of staff under the regime of General Buhari, announced the policy of war against indiscipline in Nigeria. Just listen to this. 
manifestations of indiscipline, such as rushing into buses, driving on the wrong side of the road, littering the streets, constituting ourselves into public nuisances, working without commitment, and devoting little or no time to the upbringing of our children. During this period, many Nigerians, particularly the army leaders, were resentful with Buhari's harsh methods of regulating corruption in the country. This led to a bloodless coup by General Ibrahim Babagida in 1985, whose leadership promised to end the constant human rights abuses by the previous regime. Babagida took over power with the support of some lower middle-level military personnel which he had subsequently placed into positions to benefit his aspirations of power. I'm pleased to take this opportunity to declare once again, therefore, that this administration attaches the greatest importance to constructive and helpful criticisms as well as the freedom of the press, and to declare further that the administration also attaches the greatest importance of fundamental human rights. In June 12, 1993, presidential elections were held in Nigeria with the goal of civilian government being restored. The result was a victory for Moshud Olawale Abiola of the Social Democratic Party, who defeated Bashar Tofa of the National Republican Convention. However, Babagida and his government decided to nullify the results, which led to civil unrest and labor strikes in the country. The people of this country went to polls on Saturday, June 12, 1993, and without let or hindrance, chose me as their president. Didn't they? General Papagida has no concrete evidence for why they nullified the results of the election. Listen to his comment. It is true that the presidential election was generally seen to be free, fair, and peaceful. However, there was in fact a huge array of electoral practices virtually in all the states of the federation before the actual voting began. Like what I said earlier that every military head of state has a unique justification of why the previous government was overthrown. General Babagida came into power promised to restore civilian government in the country. But what happened after the 1993 general elections? He decided to cancel the results of the election. Babagida was also involved in the 1966 counter coup, which resulted in the death of Abu Yuronsi, who was the first military head of state of Nigeria. Babagida's regime was characterized by corruption, mismanagement, the privatization of public office and public resources, the economic crisis, and civil unrest in the country. Many Nigerians believe that his government was the most corrupt in the history of Nigeria. After months of civil and economic unrest, Babagida responded to public outcry and appointed Shoneka as the interior president of Nigeria in August of 1993. However, during this period, inflation in Nigeria had become uncontrollable and foreign investments in non-oil-related industries have significantly reduced. During his brief time as president, Shoneka tried to create a policy that would lead the Nigerian people back to a democratic rule. This initiative failed as Shoneka's interior administration only lasted for three months until he was overthrown by his own Secretary of Defense, Sani Abasha former head of the interim national government and commander-in-chief of the armed forces, Chief Anas Shoneka, and my subsequent appointment as head of state and commander-in-chief, I have had extensive consultations within the armed forces hierarchy and other well-meaning Nigerians in a bid to find solutions to the various political, economic, and social problems which have engulfed our beloved country 
Shortly after General Sonny Abasha took over power from President Shoneka in 1993, he implemented a policy that legally gave his government absolute power and immunity to prosecute those who are deemed as criminals in the country. Abasha has been an underdog in the Nigerian military for a long time. He was involved in the 1996 counter coup led by the Northerners that brought Yakubu Gowan into power. The 1983 military coup as well as the 1985 coup and he led his last military coup in 1993 that finally brought him into power as a military head of state. His administration managed to increase Nigeria foreign reserves from $494 million in 1993 to $9.6 billion by the middle of 1997. Abasha also reduced the debt of Nigeria from $36 billion in 1993 to $27 billion in 1997. Abasha died mysteriously in 1998 even though many people jubilated over his death, but the cause of his death is still very unclear to many Nigerians. Even though Abasha did a lot to boost the economy and reduce the country's debt at that time, but many Nigerians did not recognize his contributions because they were already fed up of the military rule in the country. In 1998, Abasha died mysteriously. Up to date, many Nigerians are still asking questions about what exactly led to the death of Sani Abasha. After the death of General Sani Abasha, General Abu Salami Abubakar was brought into power as a military head of state of Nigeria in 1998. However, Abubakar was reluctant to accept the mantle of leadership. He was later sworn in on the night of June 1998. Abu Bakr's government created a new Nigerian constitution, which would be implemented once a democratic elected leader was in place. Shortly after he was sworn in, Abu Bakr promised to hold general elections and step down as a leader of Nigeria within one year. Critics of military leadership doubted that he would keep his promise, but he proved them wrong. Olusegun Obasanjo, who has already led Nigeria as a military leader, won the popular vote and became the third civilian president of Nigeria in 1999. His election to the office of president restored Nigeria's civilian rule. This year actually marks two decades of consistent civilian rule in Nigeria. I, Olusegun Obasanjo, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will be faithful, that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. In 1999, General Abu Salami Abu Bakar peacefully handed over power to a civilian government. President Olusegun Obasanjo became the third democratic elected president of Nigeria. Since then, Nigerians have been maintaining a consistent democratic elected government in the country. That's all for today. Thank you guys for watching and bye for now.